What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today I want to talk to you about something that I used to use very heavily when I first got started on my financial journey. It's called the 50-30-20 rule. It's a very simple, basic method of budgeting, but it can take you a long way, especially if you're just getting started. It makes your life a lot easier by categorizing your budget into three different categories, and it gives you percentages of how much money you make per month should go toward each category. So for anyone who wants to tighten up your budget or be more intentional with your budget, see where exactly your money is going, how to chop it up in three different areas, this video is going to be for you. And I know how difficult it is, especially when you're just getting started off with your finances or just when you've been budgeting for a while, but you feel like your money isn't going where it should go. So then it makes the whole process of budgeting seem kind of pointless. Like, hold on a minute. I'm planning, I'm, you know, putting my money here and there and it's still, I'm not saving as much as I want to. I don't have as much money as I want to have at the end of every month. I know what that's like. And this method isn't just for beginners. Anybody can use it. I use it for the first, I want to say four years of me being on my own and living alone and everything like that. And it's worked wonders until I was able to move on to different types of budgeting methods. But this video is gonna be a nice simple breakdown of the 50, 30, 20 rule, where to put your money, how to use the 50, 30, 20 rule, and how to adjust it. Let's get into this. So the first step is to find something to write this down on, whether it's a sheet of paper, your cell phone, notes app, your Excel files or whatever on your computer, you wanna use something to actually notate this. Or you can do the cool thing and hit the link in my description where I give you free access to a document that I created specifically about the 50, 30, 20 rule, how to use it, how to break it down, and it actually has spaces for you to fill it out for yourself so you can budget that way and base your budget based off of that every single month. And it has it to where you can actually break it down. So if you don't get paid once a month, you might get paid twice a month like most people, it breaks it down in that way as well. But anyway, the first step of this is gonna to be to write down or type whatever you're using. You're gonna to wanna to put down the amount of money that you make every month after taxes. That's what's gonna go at the top of the page. Okay, so under that should be 50, 30, 20, and these are gonna be your three categories. So on the far left column, 50% of the money that is at the top goes towards your needs. That is what the 50% is for. Now, the crazy thing is the first thing I noticed about this budget is it was a little tricky for me at first because I had a hard time differentiating what needs and wants were. When most people see needs, they just put every bill they have in that category and you could have something like a cell phone bill or like a Spotify or you know something like that or even an Amazon type of bill if you have Amazon Prime, right? These are not needs. Yeah, they might make your life easier, but they're definitely not needs. So, so in the free sheet that I give you that shows you how to break down the 50, 30, 20 rule, it actually breaks down needs and like what they are and what they aren't. So if you can't think of them off the top of your head, don't worry, just download that file. So it'll actually help you if you just brainstorm a little bit. Think about the things that you need that you spend money on right now. I mean, of course, you're going to already think of rent, utilities, things of that nature. You might think of your car, gas, things of that nature, groceries, right? Those are a few examples of needs, but obviously there's a lot more needs that are in the world that cost a lot of money that a lot of people have that not everyone necessarily has. So you're going to want to brainstorm and write those things down within the 50% column. And don't worry, this is not like a permanent thing. Just think as much as you can off the top of your head. You're probably not going to think of everything off the top of your head, which is fine. I'm also going to have that within the file that I give you that you can download for free by clicking that link in the description. The one with my website on it, reggiebryant.com. That has a ring to it. I'm gonna start saying that a little more. Anyway, you're gonna write the prices beside every single need that you have in that column, and then you're pretty much done. Now, don't be alarmed if this adds up to be more than 50% or less than 50%, because the thing is, it's not like a concrete thing. This is just a simple guide. 50% is what is suggested. And they say that your housing shouldn't be more than 30% of that number at the top of the page. So majority of this 50% is gonna be that 30% if I had to guess. That's at least what mine was. And the cost of living is very high right now. So if you see that your number is over 50%, don't worry about it. I mean, a lot of people are. In fact, I would say most people People are over that 50% when it comes to needs for the 50, 30, 20 rule. Don't worry about that. We can talk about that later and tweak some things if we need to and go from there. So these expenses are what I call a given. This is just how I guided myself through it because there wasn't like anyone to guide me on how to properly do the 50, 30, 20 rule. So what I came up with is there's different types of expenses, right? And of course we're breaking down three, but these right here are a given. Like no matter what time of the year it is, no matter what month, what day, I am absolutely gonna spend my money on my rent. I'm absolutely gonna spend money on gas for my car. I'm absolutely gonna buy groceries. 
I'm definitely going to pay for my utilities every month. So these are given expenses. These expenses must take place. That is why I had such a big issue differentiating between needs in the next category, which is wants. This is where 30% of your money is going to go, theoretically speaking, of course, but 30% is your want. So think about you know, clothes, think about shoes, think about entertainment, think about going out for dinner, think about going out to the movies or having a good time, going to comedy clubs, going to events, traveling, or it might be things that you haven't necessarily thought about as once. Like maybe it's your cell phone bill or your gym membership. It could be Hulu, Netflix, Uber Eats, you know, things like that. So think about things that you spend money on the regular on, but you don't need. Those are what are categorized as your wants. So of course, the things that I named in the beginning, like traveling and stuff, yeah, that's stuff that everyone kind of wants to do, but I'm talking about the wants that you spend your money on every month that almost seem like needs at this time, that almost seem like needs. And I get it, sometimes the line gets a little blurred between wants and needs, which one is which. And sometimes if you have something on auto, like auto pay, for example, like if you get your cell phone bill and you have an auto payment set up for it, like you're not really thinking about it that much, but it's still coming out of your bank account. And a lot of times we put auto payments on what we need, like our rent, like our utilities. And so when we put other things on auto pay, we might think of them as needs without even really thinking about it without even really considering the fact that they're not needs. So that's how you wanna break down your needs. That's where 30% of your money typically goes. And you might find yourself asking, well, why does so much money need to go towards my wants? And what a lot of people don't understand is and something that I really didn't understand. I actually got schooled on this a couple years ago. We actually spend a lot more money on our wants than we care to admit. Think about all the times you went out to eat. I'm not talking about like, affordable places. I'm talking about places that actually take some money out of your pocket. Think about the amount of dates you go on a month. Think about the amount of entertainment you consume, how many times you leave the house. Think about the luxuries in your life that you don't need, but you're comfortable with and you like having them. A lot of times, more than 30% actually goes into the wants. So that's why the 30% is actually a lot and you might hear someone say, well, why don't you just swap the, the last one? Because the last one, by the way, is 20%, which is saving. And that's where 20% of your money should go. And a lot of folks will say, well, why don't you swap the 30 with the 20? You could. I'm not stopping you from doing it. And it's actually a good idea to do so. But I just want you to understand there's very few people who actually save 20% of their income. But that's why this 50-30-20 rule is going to be really good. It's going to be exceptionally good for beginners because from this, you can see exactly where every dollar that you have is going every single month. And from there, you can make adjustments. You can tweak certain things because it's not going to necessarily be 50-30-20 for everybody. It might be 40-30-30 for some people or some other variation of the number. You know, you, you guys are probably more creative than I am when it comes to that stuff, but you see what I'm saying. But we're not gonna jump into that just yet. We'll go into different variations in just a second. But right now we're gonna jump into the third part of this, and that is 20%, that is your savings. And I know to some of you it may sound as simple as just, okay, we'll just put 20% in my savings account. It is not necessarily that simple because it's gonna depend on you and your specific goal in life. Uh, for me, when I was doing the 50, 30, 20 rule, I was all about my savings account, but I had this problem where I saw all this money in my savings account and my checking was just above it and they were all in the same thing. I could see them on the same screen and I'd be like, ah, oh, I've been doing a good job saving, but I kind of want to take a little bit of it. I want to take this $500 and, and, and buy this, you know? And so what I realized was if I put some of my savings into another account that I can't see that's out of sight, out of mind, I can save a lot more money a lot quicker that way. So that's what I did. Anyway, as I said, don't freak out if you can't save 20%. Uh, you might be saving five to 10%, that's perfectly fine. Just you wanna work your way up to 20 and beyond if you can. And the way you wanna split it up is, you know, your regular savings account, and you might have a separate savings account, which if you do have a separate savings account, I would highly recommend a high yield savings account because that could be a good place to build an emergency fund. And if you don't know what emergency fund is, it's generally described as an account where you have three to six months worth of expenses. But if you know anything about me, I don't wanna just cut it off at three to six months. I wanna do more like four to eight months. But even if you wanted to keep the three to six months, don't think so much of expenses. Think more of three to six months worth of paychecks because most of us actually out earn our expenses by quite a bit. So if you go on the safer side and save up three to six months worth of paychecks, 
first of all, you're, it's going to take you longer to reach your goal. Yeah, I get it. That's a con. But you'll have a much more robust emergency fund, which is always good to have at the end of the day when you lay your head down so you can go to sleep. You're going to sleep a lot better when you know you have a robust emergency fund and a savings account on top of that. And this is for you if you have a little extra money. You don't have to save all of it into a savings account. There's different forms of savings. So we talked about your regular savings account and we talked about your high yield savings account. Cool. But even if you have your money in a high yield savings account, it's not going to give you that much in interest. It might give you 2.15% per year. I know that was an oddly specific number, but that's how much money my high yield savings account pays me. And that's good because there's no risk involved with that. It's just, it's going to go up 2.15% no matter what. That's great. And of course, they're raising the interest rates now. So it's cool. Like I'm, I'm not really, I'm not upset about that. I'm not complaining or anything about that. But if you really, really, really want your money to grow and you want to build wealth, which is the whole point, in my opinion, of budgeting, I'm not going to take myself through this very intricate and intentional planning and 50, 30, 20 in my money, right? If I'm not planning on my money going to the next level at the end of the day. So there's nothing wrong with putting maybe 15% into your savings account and your emergency fund and then putting the other 5% of that 20% into some form of an investment account. It could be something like individual stocks. It could be something like a mutual fund or an index fund. You'll just have to figure out what's best for you. But the reason that's so important and so powerful is because the whole point of saving money, the whole point of budgeting, the whole point of being good with your money, the whole point of this YouTube channel is so that you can grow your wealth so you can grow your money so you can just relax not have to worry and freak out and stress out about money all the time so you can give your family a good life so you can give yourself a good life a good peace of mind know that no matter what happens you are financially secure and if you want my opinion on what some good investments are think of stuff like the s p 500. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. It stands for Standard & Poor's 500, but it's over 500 companies in the US that are the best of the best and it's allocated. So Apple and Microsoft were at the top of that list. And so most of the money for that fund goes to those two. And those businesses are going absolutely nowhere. And the S&P 500 has consistently returned over 10% year over year over year. I talk about that a lot more in my book, but that's just a quick thing that I have to talk about. But anyway, some funds that match the S&P 500, I'll give you an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. ETF would be VOO. And then an index fund would be VFIAX. Those are two examples of good investments that you can just put your money in very passively. It could be $100 a month if you wanted to very passively and then just let it grow. Do that over a long period of time. You're building your wealth and you're saving your money at the same time. So that is the 50 30 20 rule that's how you break it down that's how you can think about it in different ways and if you want to really really get better with it and get good with your money definitely check out the link in my description where you can download a free file of that and you can fill it out for yourself and you can probably get even more insight from reading that document from even watching this video and that's what i'm all about financial education and helping you build your wealth and have that financial security that you've always wanted and I want you to keep building on that and continue to improve. And just like I was saying earlier, it might not be 50, 30, 20 for you. It might be like 70, 20, 10. But no matter what it is, you can always change it if you're not happy with it. And you always want to change something that you can control. So if you can't control it, you can't change it right now. Cool. I'm going to mess with what I can control. I'm going to adjust what I can control. And I'm going to make my savings a little better because I want to save more at the end of the day. That's what you could say to yourself. And once you fill everything out on the sheet of paper or on the file that I give you, you can see exactly where you're at. Okay, I'm exactly at 50% or, oh, I'm a little too high in this category. I want to lower it down some. You can make those adjustments yourself. And, you know, if you want to get even better with budgeting and saving, you can check out my video. It's called How to Double Your Savings and How to Master Budgeting and Saving Your Money. Those two will be listed up here. I want you to check those out after you watch this video. I really, really wish the videos like those two and this one existed when I first got started. Cause I would be so much further along, but whether you were just getting started now, or if you've been, you know, on your financial journey for a while, but you just haven't been able to tighten up your budget. I hope this video added value to you. And I hope that you use every single thing that I said in this video, including that file that I want you to download so that you can really optimize what you have in your bank account. Cause once you can control what's in your bank account, you can handle getting even more money. And as you continue to improve, you will reach every single one of your financial goals. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.